So today I'd like to measure the speed of the sound in the air. And to do that, I've got a stopwatch so I can record time. And I've also got something to measure distance. Now, to be honest, the meter stick isn't the best. If we're gonna be lo looking at a large distance like we might have outside here in the field, something like a trundle wheel or a big long tape measure might be more appropriate. But basically, once you know a time and a distance, we can then calculate the speed. Now, in order to calculate the speed of sound, what we're gonna do is we're going to be just very simply using a couple of blocks of wood. The reason is that you can see when these are actually coming together. So you can actually see when the two things touch and then you can record the time between seeing them touch and actually hearing that sound. So these ones here, they can make quite a big sound but they're very, very simple. So what we can do is maybe look at somebody who's maybe a hundred meters away. Now we can record that distance. And again, the bigger the distance, the more accurate it comes to actually getting your timing reading. But it gets to a point where they're so far away, you can't actually hear the sound. 100 meters tends to work quite well. So what you need to do is you need to get your stopwatch. You need to look at the time at which you see them make the sound. And then you need to stop the timer when you actually hear the sound. Now, there's a few difficulties with this. First of all, when we're measuring very, very small times, there's also a huge amount of human error. Now, I suppose to some extent we can predict when you start to see their hands move, when you're going to start the timer and then when you're going to stop it. But there are certain things you can do to actually improve this. It might be that you're having a whole class of people taking readings. The more people you have taking readings, the more results you have. And therefore, you can maybe get rid of the anomalies, get rid of the outliers and get a better value. And the other thing you can do is just keep doing it several times. After a while, you get to a good set of data. You can use that data to take an average and then you can use that for your time. So in terms of this experiment here, it's pretty straightforward to get a good measurement of the distance, but it's the timing which is a little bit harder. But nevertheless, this is just a nice way to actually get outside and actually look at the speed of sound. And this is normally about 330 meters per second. Obviously it does depend upon things like the air temperature, the pressure and things like that, because if you've got a colder day, it means the particles are closer together and actually the speed of sound increases. But when you do this experiment, you're looking to get a value of about 330 meters per second.